All right guys, studying for our first semester geometry final. If you missed my first video, I'll link it up here for you. Otherwise, this is the second video that I have in this uh, series. And so be sure to watch all of them in order to do your best on our first semester geometry final. Uh, one quick thing before we get into these topics in this video is that when you study for math of any kind, you always wanna probably watch the video, pause it, and then write down the problem, do it yourself, and then hit play again and see if you did it the same way that I did. If they match up, then we probably did it the right way, okay? So with that said, I'm gonna go over some conditional statements. I have these five I wanna talk about. We're gonna go over a couple patterns, uh, as well as give you an algebraic proof, and lastly talk about some other proof reasons that you need to know for their final. All right, our first problem here says that we're going to write the following as a conditional statement, converse, inverse, contrapositive, and biconditional. And that statement is this. This is an angle that's 45 degrees is not obtuse. All right. So first off, as a conditional statement, that has to be an if-then form. So if you look at uh, what we have here, an angle is 45, that's 45 degrees is not obtuse. I could say if an angle is 45 degrees, then it is not obtuse. I'll write that for you. Okay, the second thing we have to do is write the converse. What the converse does is it switches our hypothesis with our conclusion, or the if part with the then part, and it looks like this. And it reads, if an angle's not obtuse, then it's 45 degrees. You can see I just switched our kind of our first part with our second part. This is called the hypothesis. Our second part's called the conclusion. Okay, the third thing it wants us to do is write the inverse. What the inverse is going to do is negate both our hypothesis and our conclusion, but it's gonna keep it in the original or order. So by negate, I mean add words like not or isn't or won't be, things like that. So for this one, it'd say something like, if an angle isn't 45 degrees, then it's not, or then it is obtuse. Currently it says it's not, so we have to do the opposite of that, which in this case would be is, all right? It would look like this. Okay, so for this sentence, it says and if an angle isn't 45 degrees, then it is obtuse. You notice I switched my kind of is and isn't, is not and is from my original statement, all right? The fourth part is the contrapositive. What this one does is it switches the first and last, switches the order, and it negates it to look like this. All right, and this says if an angle is obtuse, then it isn't 45 degrees. Okay, so again here, I switched my hypothesis and conclusion as well as I kind of made them both their opposites or made them negative. Um, again, my original was if an angle's not obtuse, so here it is obtuse, then it is 45 degrees, then it isn't 45 degrees. Okay, the last part is called the biconditional. What this does is it takes away the ifs and the thens, and it replaces it in the middle with the phrase if and only if. All right, so I'm gonna take my hypothesis, if and only if, my conclusion. Looks like this. Okay, so again, I went back to my original here in pink that says an angle is 45 degrees, and then my new phrase for the biconditional, if and only if, it's not obtuse, okay? So the only thing I did is I put that phrase, if and only if, right there in the middle. If you need more practice with this or more examples, I have a video up here that I'll link. Uh, go ahead and watch that if these seem a little bit tricky for you. All right, the second part of this video is just some patterns. These, uh, again, are both in the review packet that I gave my students. Otherwise, this is some interesting ones for you. This is 1, 8, 27, 64, 25. If you have a keen eye, you know right away that these are actually cube numbers. So, for example, 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27, and so on. So this would be four cubed, five cubed, which means I need six cubed, which if you know your cubes, that'd be 216. All right, so 216 would be the next thing that comes in this pattern. All right, this next one I think is very challenging. It goes one, one half, three halves, zero, two, negative one half, five halves, negative one, What's going on here, okay? So if you'll notice kind of what we're doing in between each one, let's just kind of take it each piece and I think you might start to see what's happening in this pattern. First off, to go from one to one half, I subtract one half, okay? And then to go from uh, one half to three halves, I add one, all right? I add one. All right, then I go back down to zero and to go from three halves to zero, I subtract three halves 
to go back to two, I have to add now, I'm gonna add two. And what we're really doing, if you look at all the denominators of these that are fractions are a two or it's a half, okay? And so instead of actually just adding one or adding two here, what I'm really doing is adding two halves. That's the same thing as one. Or instead of two, that's four halves. So plus four halves. And I think now you can maybe start to see what the pattern is. On top, as it goes one, two, three, four, the signs in between go minus, plus, minus, plus, right, and so on. And so if we keep doing this, does it work? Well, then I'd, my next uh, thing in the pattern would be to, oops, uh, subtract five halves. Yep, that would get me back down to negative one half. Then I need to add six halves, which would get me to five halves, and then subtract seven halves, and yep, that gets me back to negative one. Okay, and so for my next, uh, my next number in this series or sequence would be to add, and that'd be eight halves. Well, negative one plus eight halves is the same thing as negative one plus four, which negative one plus four would be three. Okay, so the next number in this pattern is actually three, but it kind of follows this kind of plus minus, plus minus, one, two, three, four, five on the top, all halves on the bottom. All right guys, next problem we're gonna do is review for our first semester final here in geometry is an algebraic proof, okay? So our first line is given to us. Our first line reason is always the given. Okay, in this case, our first line for our statement says six times the quantity x plus four equals 60. What I would encourage you to do is go ahead and solve this like you would any other equation on the left side, and then go back and write your reasons on the right side as you do this. So let me solve the left side here for us. All right, so after doing the math, looks like x equals six, which means on the right side, I need to write the reasons for the way I got these problems to be. Okay, so first off, in order to uh, kind of put this six through to this, that's called the distributive property or distributive property of equality. Distributive property of equality, okay? And then what I did is I subtracted 24 on both sides to get this line uh, 6x equals 36. So I'm gonna say this is a subtraction property of equality. All right, then of course, to get my answer x equals six, what I did is I divided by six on both sides. So that's the division property of equality. All right, so by our given distributive property, subtraction property, and division property of equality, we were able to get this algebraic proof to be x equals six. Now, what about geometry proofs or geometric proofs? Well, uh, for those, I have a bunch of videos in my geometry proof reasons playlist I'll put up here for you. You can check out that link, but there's things like this uh, segment addition postulates, there's the symmetric property, definition of congruence, as well as several other um, different reasons that you need to know to solve geometric proofs. So go ahead and check that out. Did this video help you on studying for your final for geometry? If it did, please help me out by liking this video down below. Otherwise, I think you might enjoy this video as we do more studying for our first semester final.